Okay, I am back. Hello? How are you? Good to see you. Uh, yeah, before we get started, before we, like, kind of continue, though, I, um, you know, thinking about, uh, retiring, I think. No, I'm, I'm getting older, so I'm gonna think, think, think about... I'm thinking about retiring. Thinking about, uh, retiring. retiring no, I'm, no, I'm getting I'm older, about so I'm thinking about, uh, about retiring, think about. So, you know, I mean... <laughs> oh, shit! I have to gift subs! I can't, though! I don't have it. I my money won't go through to Twitch! I, I didn't say how many. I'll give you- I'll give you an extra ten, okay? That'll be a hundred and ten. I was making a joke because like I, I talk about this shit all the time and I'm just a fucking like, all right. No, I'm not going to talk about retiring anymore. I, I'll give you ten. I'll give you ten. I can't even fucking connect my Twitch to my fucking payment stuff. Just real debt. Add it to the tab. All right, let's do AI dungeon. Isn't that going to be fun, guys? Do I have some? Maybe I should get some music for this. Like, epic royalty-free music? Kind of how it works, right? Yeah, I'll get some epic royalty-free music. Uh, royalty-free scary. Okay. This one sounds promising. One hour of royalty-free horror music. Do a clash of clans. Well, this is just to have the background sounds for when we do our adventure. Epic royalty-free music. This is, uh, okay, this is called Fire and Thunder. What's this one sound like? I like it. It's not bad. Okay. We need a, like, just generic, general, medieval music. Okay, this is, um... Fantasy, medieval music, instrumental, no copyright. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright. So, apparently, AI Dungeon is a lot different now, I guess. Right? I don't know exactly what that means, but I know that apparently it's been, it's changed. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm going to try to figure out what it means. You want premium? I have premium on AI Dungeon, and I have premium on Novel AI as well. You're going to do face cam finally? I'll put it on for a, a few minutes. Go ahead and do this. Uh, close that. I need to put some lip balm on, though. I gotta change the, uh... We aren't- we aren't flipping, we are building. I guess that could make sense in AI Dungeon. Okay. Looks good. And move this. I have like the Voyager thing. I don't think that really matters though. Okay, so this is this is what I remember. I'll move the screen around for you. Can you see it? Not yet. I gotta close. Like, this is still open. Okay. Make sure you can see the chat window. Important. Make it a little bigger so you can read it better. Okay. So what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? What setting do we want?
fantasy, mystery, apocalyptic. We can make just make up a, a one on our own too, right? Where should I be? Oh, I gotta turn my ring light on. I can't be sitting here like this. I'll, okay, let's do let's do uh, apocalyptic. Oh, a nice warm light with a coffee. That's better. There. Although, why am I so frame ready? I'm too like I'm too. I look weird. Why? Why does it? Why do I look weird? I look even weirder. I'm. Why is it so frame ready? You guys see what I'm talking about? I shouldn't. There we go. That was weird. Now I don't look like I'm red. Too much lip balm? Alright, you don't need to see the Reddit shelf anymore. I look a little disheveled, don't I? Alright. Here we go. So, what music should I have on? I got my coffee right here. I told you I was going to make one. Ah, good. All right. Harsh noises? Where? All right, what's your, let's go. Uh, it's been a while. Let's go ahead and do, let's do apocalyptic. So we'll do four. Do I have to click it or just say it? What do I do? Nothing? Okay. What character do I want to be? How about a, um, what character? Matter? What would you guys want to see? How about just like a survivor? Survivor sounds good. Your character's name. Let's get some good music here. I gotta make sure this is, sounds good. This doesn't make much sense for where we are, but whatever. I gotta make sure my voice changer works too for like the monsters and demons and everything. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello there, traveler. Yeah, okay, if that sounds okay. Ed, Edward, Edward. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> you, <laughs> wait, this pictures now? This is one of their photos. Okay. You are Edward. A survivor trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what is left. You have a backpack and a canteen. You haven't eaten in two days, so you're desperately searching for food. You enter a run-down building and find it occupied by a man and his two children. They lit a fire in the fireplace to keep themselves warm. You can see a sack of potatoes on a shelf and a closed tin of peaches in the fridge. As you reach to grab the peaches, you catch a glimpse of movement out of the corner of your eye. Don't move, the man says. Did I just, like, break into this person's house? What happens now? Okay, so from what I remember, you don't, you have to, like, do. Okay. Do? What do you say? What happens next? So what do I do? Take the peaches out of the fridge. Does that matter? Is that okay? That's okay, right? You take the peaches out of the fridge. Training the, training the AI, please tap on the response you'd like to keep or hit undo. I've got the peaches, you say in a cheery tone. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. My wife and I have been eating those for two days and she's got nothing left. 
No worries, I'm just passing through. Don't try and stop me. There's a lot of zombies out there. Or you quickly put the peaches back into the original sack. That done, you turn to leave. The man is suddenly on you. Where'd you get those peaches, he asks. Why? Are they going to hurt me? No, but I'm going to. Keep them. The man then draws a gun and flips it at you. We're going to go with this one. Why did I make this decision? I don't know. It's, it's funnier. Okay, the man draws a gun and points it at you. I'm going to say... You would shoot me in front of your children? You would shoot me in front of your children? Turn that feature off. Yeah, I will. You would shoot me in front of your children? I might. You wouldn't. Try me. Fine, I won't shoot you. Good, now put the gun down. He does so. You slowly approach him, still not taking your eyes off of him. You're only a few feet away now. Keep a lookout. <laughs> you whisper. I know. So <laughs> the gun has legs. Who is this person? I grab the gun out of his hands. Grab the gun out of his hands. Do it. You grab the gun out of his hands and turn to leave. Where are you going, he asks. I'm getting somewhere safe. But I thought you... Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. He then picks up the gun again and <laughs> points it at you. I took it from him. That doesn't make any sense. He got that from somewhere else. Point my gun at him. You point your gun at him. So Don't you shoot, he says. I won't if you don't. You're a good boy. You'll get your fill of good food and nice warm beds. I hope so. Now get out of here. I've got a business to run after this is all over. Bye. Shoot into the ceiling. You shoot the man in the head with your gun. He slumps down. You quickly look around to make sure his children have not seen you or heard this. They haven't. You then leave the room. You exit the rundown building and find yourself in a street full of overturned vehicles and debris. You see the man with the two children coming down the street. Um, I wanted to like be like, boom, like, see you later. I'm not pointing my gun. Exit the rundown building and find yourself in a street full of overturned vehicles and debris. What should I do? This is a post-apocalyptic, okay. Run towards the zombies. I'll lose him in the zombies. You run towards the zombies as fast as you can. You are worried about being seen by the man with the gun. You're also worried about the safety of the peaches. Because heaven forbid something happens to those. You continue moving towards the zombies when the man with the gun fires and the bullet hits the zombie in the chest. You hear a satisfying crack as the zombie collapses to the ground. You keep running. Protect the peaches. You protect the peaches. You grab the peaches and tuck them into your bag. Don't shoot, you yell, as you continue running towards the man. No, I want to run that way. I didn't shoot. The gun went off by itself. I was just reaching for the bullets to stop the bleeding. 
Shut up, you say, as you run. You need to get off the street. This is stupid. Eat the peaches in front of the man. What? This AI imaging is just so fucked up. You bite into a peach and you find yourself in a world of flavor and sunshine. You smile from ear to ear. You should have shot the bastards, the man says as he picks up another peach. I can't shoot straight, you say. That's what you get for eating garbage, he says. What the fuck is happening in this story? Uh, I'll say. Do you want to join forces? We could work together to fight zombies. That actually is pretty accurate, though. We weren't- we aren't supposed to talk to each other, he says. We are not supposed to be here in the first place, you yell. You're right, let's work together. You decide to work together. The man pulls out a canteen of water and gives you some. Drink the entire canteen. Please verify your email address. <laughs> what? What do you mean, verify my- I already did all this! I ver- I already- I verified my email! Hold on. What do you mean, what do you ver- I verify my email address? That's part of the story? Try the other one. Should I try Novel AI instead? I already did verify my email. That's fucked up. I'll try, I'll try the other one. Is it that much different? Okay, text adventure. Should I do this one? Which one should I do? Tall streamer at Hotmail. All right, I'll do text adventure. Okay. All right, what do you, let's just, I guess we can just do this one. AI Dungeon lost the rights to use OpenAI, so they had to make a new AI and it's just not as good as bad. Really? Well, I gotta change this, it says I'm playing. Um, hold on. Does it have a thing on on Twitch? It does. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll just do this one. There's other stuff on that AI Dungeon website though that looked interesting. Okay, so let's get started here. All right, new track. What would you like to do? Story. Okay, let's start a story. You are. Lost in the woods. Your name is... You are lost in the woods. Your name is... Edward... Third. Your father is Edward the Great. And he has sent you into the woods to claim a relic that has been lost for over 200 centuries. Is that long? Edgeworth? What's Edgeworth? Edward. This is a run-on sentence. Is that, the AI doesn't care about run-on sentences. You have... A rusty knife and a trusty sword. Begin. As you walk deeper into the woods, you see an old man sitting on a rock. He looks like he's sleeping. You approach him cautiously, but as you get closer, he suddenly sits up, staring at you with bloodshot eyes. That's 20,000 years. Are you serious?
Okay. Say. Dear old man, I'm looking for a relic that has been lost in time. Dear old man, I'm looking for a relic that's been lost to time. The old man laughs. Ha! <laughs> that's exactly what I am. I am the relic master of the forest. And I know every relic in this forest by heart. What do you want from me? Holy shit. Do you know where the heart of Edward is? He laughs again. Of course I do. <laughs> it's right here in my pocket. But before you can grab it, he vanishes. You're standing near a dead tree. There's a large hole in the ground nearby and a wooden stake sticking out of the ground. I shouldn't have said that. Lie down in the hole. On my back. A moment later, you hear a strange sound coming from below you. As you look down, you see the old man sitting on the ground, smiling at you. Hello there, he says. Wait, am I on top of him? He's lying down on the ground too? Wild card. Type only a question mark to ask and wonder. Okay, that's... Where did you go? How did you disappear so quickly? Oh, that was just a little trick I learned when I was young. I can disappear and appear at will. Can you teach me? Old man. Sure, he says. Come on down and we'll have some fun. You descend into the hole, which seems to be a small cave. The old man follows you in. I gotta be very cautious. Keep my hands on my knife. On my sword. While we walk into the cave. As soon as you enter the cave, the old man grabs his pocket watch and starts ticking loudly. Suddenly a huge creature bursts <laughs> Suddenly a huge creature bursts out of the ground behind you. It looks like a cross between a bull and a bear. Watch out! It turns around and sees the old man. It snarls and charges at him. The old man jumps out of the way just in time and the creature falls on its side, stunned. Kill it! You leap forward and swing your sword at the beast, cutting off one of its legs. It howls in pain and lunges at you. You dodge the attack and stab it in the eye with your sword. Old man, grab me the holy water from my backpack. You run back towards the old man who is still holding the pocket watch in his hand. He takes it out of his pocket and flicks it open. Suddenly he screams and drops the watch. <laughs> pick up the watch. You pick up the watch. The watch is cracked and covered in dirt, but inside you can see a tiny fragment of white bone. You take the watch out of the pocket and put it back in your bag. What does this watch do? Nothing special, the old man says. Just a good luck charm. You leave the cave and head deeper into the woods. You are now in the clearing where you found the relic. Okay. <laughs> Why did he scream? Why did you scream 
after opening the pocket, the watch. Oh, that's just something that happens sometimes, the old man says. It's not important. Just don't open it again, okay? You are standing in a clearing to the west is a small hill. If I open this pocket watch, what will happen? Don't open it again! And make sure you never tell anybody about this place! You reach into your bag and pull out a small metal box. It is engraved with strange symbols. Open the pocket watch. Suddenly the old man disappears. You feel yourself falling through the air and then everything goes black. You are lying on the ground with the old man kneeling beside you. He's holding a flask of water. Where are we? We're in the forest, he replies. I had to bring you here because I couldn't find any other way to contact you. Why? Because if anyone else finds out about this place, they might try to come here. Is it an, how nice is it? It's a time machine. What year is it? It's 1827, it's 1827, he replies. How long have I been unconscious? About two weeks. You sit up. Thank you for saving me, old man. Open the pocket watch. This is this might be the relic. This is the relic. The old man screams and drops the watch. You open the watch and see a piece of white bone. You close the watch and put it back in your bag. You stand up and walk over to the old man. Wait, am I in the cave? I think, is that the relic? Yes, he says, that is the relic. You take the relic from him, put it in your bag. Now let's get out of here. So that's the heart of it, of, 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 I don't know, what's the name of the guy? Of Edward? <laughs> Edward's heart? That's the heart of Edward. Can't believe it. A heart. Edward is in my hands. Father will be most pleased. No, the old man shouts. This is evil. We must destroy it. But why? I've been searching for this for years. Because it's evil. What makes it evil? It's cursed, he replies. If you open it, it will take away all of your memories. And then you won't remember anything. You hold the relic in both hands. Open it. Suddenly, you're standing in a dark room. You are holding a glowing blue orb. You look around the room and notice that the walls are covered in strange writing. You read. The first man, Adam, created in the image of God, was alone in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Keep reading. Until Eve, the second woman, was brought forth from his rib. Adam gave her to his son Cain. Adam gave her to his son Cain as a wife? Cain slew his brother Abel and fled from the Garden of Eden. Keep reading. Then, Enoch the third man walked with God and was taken up to heaven without dying. Enoch returned to earth and told his people that the world would end. After many years, the great flood destroyed the world, and Noah built an ark to save his family from the waters. 
The Ark floated for 40 days and nights until it reached dry land. Keep reading. The Ark landed on Mount Ararat in Turkey. God commanded Noah to build a tower to reach heaven. Noah obeyed and constructed the Tower of Babel, Babel, the first human structure ever made. Is this all real? Is this, does this happen? Keep reading. But Satan, the god of this world, <laughs> the hunters, we're going too far. And tried to destroy them. So he caused them to speak different languages, and they began to fight amongst themselves. It's not keep reading. God scattered the humans and scattered their language. When Moses led the Hebrew slaves out of Egypt, he was given the Ten Commandments. Moses returned to Israel and built the the tabern the tabernacle, the first temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> King Solomon built the first temple, and the Ark of the Covenant was placed in it. Solomon also built the second temple, which stood until the Romans destroyed it in 70 A. I wonder where Satan is. Satan was at this point. <laughs> Satan was banished from heaven and cast down to hell. In the last days, Satan will return to earth and the Antichrist will reign over the world. The Bible is a book of prophecy. Keep reading. The Antichrist will be a false prophet who will rise to power in the Middle East. His name is Muhammad and he will rule the world. At the end of his reign, Jesus Christ will return to earth and defeat the Antichrist? What? What the fuck are you talking about? What? Jesus will establish his kingdom on earth and rule as king of kings for a thousand years. After that, Satan will be released from prison and tempt... What is happening here? Say... This doesn't sound... Accurate. It is true that the Antichrist will arise. He will be defeated by Jesus. Also, the Antichrist will not be the only false prophet. There will be others. I don't think this is what happened. Who is talking right now? It's me, the old man says. I'm telling you what happened. You continue <laughs> reading. Aren't I reading this off of a wall? After the thousand years are up, Satan will be loosed from his prison and will deceive mankind once more. <laughs> keep reading. No, I, I don't want him to keep reading. <laughs> I'm telling him to keep reading. Hey, uh, go, keep reading. This time, he will be able to use the powers of a fallen angel called the Beast. The Beast will rule the world for seven years before being defeated by Jesus. When Satan is imprisoned again, the devil will be chained for a thousand years. Is Thor in this? Yes, the old man says. He is mentioned several times in the Bible. You continue reading. At the end of the millennium, Satan will be loosed once more and will tempt mankind to rebel against God. <laughs> Can you skip to the part with Elmo? No, the old man says, there isn't much left. During the rebellion, the Antichrist will be killed by the Archangel of Michael. Michael will be rewarded for his bravery and become the leader of the angels. <laughs> Is Elmo in this? No, the old man says. He does not appear in the Bible at all. Oh, okay. Phew. Elmo's not in the Bible. What? 
What about... What about Kermit? The frog? Kermit the frog is not mentioned in the Bible. You continue reading. Okay. Please... <laughs> Please finish the story. After that, Satan will be chained for a thousand years. All right, he's stuck. Grab the book out of his hands. I am finished, the old man says. You can stop reading now. You take the book out of his hands and put it back in your bag. <laughs> Wait, what about Elmo? You're now standing in the clearing where you found the relic. You're standing in the clearing where you found the relic. To the west is a small hill. To the east is a path leading north into the forest. Okay. <laughs> Yell, where's Elmo? Oh my god. You shout, where is Elmo? Suddenly, the old man appears. Where is Elmo, you ask? He's gone. I sent him away. You reach into your bag and pull out the pocket watch. <laughs> Fuck this Elmo-less timeline. I'm out of here. Suddenly, you're standing in a dark room. You're holding a glowing blue orb. You look around the room and notice that the walls are covered in strange writing. You read, The first man, Adam, created in the image of God, was alone in the Garden of Eden. Read the part about Elmo. Until Eve. Come on. You didn't, you can't give me like Elmo, like is, like Eve or something. <laughs> the Book of Elmo. Run out of the cave. You run out of the cave. And are standing in the clearing where you found the relic. The west is a small hill. Head towards the hill. You climb the hill and are standing at the top. To the north is a path leading south into the forest. The east is a... To the north is a path leading south into the forest. To the east is a path leading north into the forest. And to the west is a path leading north into the forest. Ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. It is buried under the hill. You ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. We've time traveled. Explain to the old man. I. How do I say this? Explain to the old man. You explain to the old man time travel. Time travel is impossible, he says. Only God can do that. Hmm. That makes me God, then. That makes you God? You ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. It's buried under the hill. That makes me God, then, you reply. Why? <laughs> because I am the one who sent you back in time, he says. We need to find the relic. We're combining, like, three or four, like, realities. Okay. Dig under the hill for the relic. Are we going to find tw two of them? You dig under the hill for the relic. We need to find the relic. Find the relic. We're in a loop. You find the relic. We need to find the relic. We need to find the relic. Start shaking the old man. You start shaking the old man. We need to find the relic. We need to find the relic.
break, smash the relic with a hammer. You smash the relic with a hammer. It's over. <laughs> okay. Slap him. It's over. We're stuck in an infinite loop now. The old man snaps out of it. We both venture to the small hill where the relic is buried. Will that fix it? Wait. Do a news story about Elmo. Okay. All right, that was fun. News story. You were the old man the whole time. Character made popular by Sesame Street. Oh, but not a, an old character, fine. Antarctic. Sounds good. 47, you're, 47, you're searching for Elmo, an old character made popular by Sesame Street. <laughs> Elmo's very elusive and would not be easy to try. That really does read like Diana. Door swings open, revealing... Alright, we need different music. How about happy kids music, right? Happy, like, kids cartoon music? Happy royalty-free cartoon music. Happy background music for videos. No copyright. I gotta skip that one. Okay, that's all right. Okay, the door swings open, revealing a dark tunnel beyond. You can see a ladder leading up to a trap door above. A huge metal box sits on the floor of the room. It looks like it might be heavy enough to crush you if you were foolish enough to try lifting it. Okay. I think I'm gonna just head down the tunnel. Lift the... Lift the box. Lift the box. It's too heavy for you to lift. You'll need at least two people to move this thing. It's too heavy. You hear a noise from the north. Yeah, I need two people. I gotta find a party member. Head north. You're standing near the exit to the end of the world tunnel. Michael is waiting outside. He waves as you approach. Hey there, Mikey, he says. Hi, Michael. 
Um, what are you doing here? I was hoping we could talk about what happened last night. I know it's probably hard to remember everything that happened. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, well, maybe you could tell me how you got home last night? Uh... Michael. The important thing... is tracking down Elmo. He's here somewhere. They spell Michael? A. Oops. How do I, what did I spell? Oh. Okay. Michael, the important thing is tracking down Elmo. He's here somewhere. Right, right. I guess we should get started then. Michael nods and takes out his notebook. You turn to leave. Michael stops you. Hey, wait, Mikey! Let me just make a few notes first. Okay. What are your notes? Oh, nothing important. Just some things I want to check back on later. All right. Michael begins writing in his notebook. You turn to leave. Michael stops you. What are you writing? What are you writing? Just some things I want to check back on later. All right. You, Mike continues writing in his book. You turn. Michael stops you again. Stop. Stop moving. I don't know if I understand why you're so worried about this Elmo guy. We've only known each other for a couple of weeks. Why do you care so much? Well, I don't really know him personally, but my parents always talked about him when I was growing up. He was always teaching us things. How to count. How to... Uh, eat right. He always seemed like a pretty stand-up guy. Yeah, I guess that's true. So, what's this all about? Are you gonna help me find him or not? I'm sorry, Mikey. What? I'm afraid I can't help you. Why not? Because I think it would be dangerous to go looking for Elmo. Dangerous? What are you... What are you talking about? Dangerous. Let's get, I mean, I need more context here. What did he teach you? He taught me a lot of things, but I didn't really pay attention to most of them. He told me how to count and how to read. <laughs> Why is it dangerous to look for Elmo? I'm afraid, might be, I'm afraid he might be dangerous. What makes you think that? He's a monster. What kind of monster? I don't know. I guess I never paid attention to what he looked like. What do you think he looks like? Jet! Uh, undo. Re redo, 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 redo. No, 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 no. Undo, undo. Okay. What does he look like? I got it. Something stupid's gonna happen. I don't know. Something big, like a bear. But he doesn't have claws or fangs, does he? No, I don't think so. Then why are you so scared? He can't hurt you. I know, but still, I don't feel safe around him. <laughs> I don't know. Michael, please, I need your help. If we can find Elmo, we can bring him to justice. What did he do? <laughs> Nothing really. I mean, he taught me stuff, but he wasn't really a bad guy. I don't know why he left. Did he ever threaten you? No. What makes Elmo dangerous? I don't know, I'm just scared. You're being silly, Michael. You shouldn't let something like this scare you. I know, I'm sorry. I just don't feel comfortable with the whole thing. 
play in editor mode, it's less likely to get stuck in a loop. Oh, how do I do that? We've got a dev in chat in the Discord. They might have some tips to make the AI work better. I, th I think I'm, I'm it, I think it's, it's working pretty good. This is vaguely intimidating Elmo. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk this way. Walk through the what is the tunnel? You enter the end of the world tunnel. Michael is waiting outside. He waves as you approach. Hey there, Mikey. Michael stops me. Uh oh. Listen to the dev. Yeah, no loops. Oh, I, I, where's editor mode though? How do I do that? Yeah, why is he saying his own name? Let me let me look at the Discord for a sec. Hold on, leave. Hold on, give me a sec. What what do I need to do? Do like editor mode? Find the relic. Let's see. All right, what do we got? Start a new story, click new story, then editor mode instead of adventure. Go to, okay, go back here. So text editor. So, okay, so in, instead of, instead of adventure mode, we do just like, just text editor. Yes, okay. Enter your prompt here. Okay, you are searching for Elmo. What's with the beach music? I know, hold on. This music is like way too like tutorial. All right, you're searching for Elmo. You're searching for Elmo, one of the most beloved children's television personalities. He has since gone into hiding. No, that's weird into hiding in an undisclosed bunker somewhere in the ant oh I just fucking burped I'm sorry Antarctic I spell hiding it is your job to track down Elmo and interrogate Gate. Him. Okay. <laughs> so, now what? Send. <laughs> I can't take this fucking music anymore. Okay, your first stop will be the National Archives. You've been granted access to the files there. You should find some useful information about Elmo's background and history, including a file on his family tree. You pull up his family tree to further investigate. Elmo's father was named William T. Sesame. His mother was Margaret M. Sesame. They were both born in Brooklyn, New York. They had three children together. A son named Peter J. Elmo was the oldest of the bunch. Followed by a daughter named Sarah Elizabeth. The last child was a boy was given the name Thomas James Elmo. Unfortunately, he died before he could say his first word. After the death of their youngest child, Elmo's parents moved to San Diego, California, where they started a... 
Um, baked goods store? This business did well enough that they eventually opened a second location in Los Angeles. They retired from the bakery after 20 years and decided to move back to Brooklyn to be close to the family. The day they arrived in Brooklyn, they found that their home had burned down. So they went back to San Diego. Bought a new house and started all over again. After five years of running the business, Elmo's parents sold it and moved back to Brooklyn. Elmo's parents never spoke of their time in California or why they returned to Brooklyn. Unfortunately, how do you spell that? How do you spell? Un I, don't, I don't want it to help me. Unfortune. How do you spell unfortunately? Unfortunately. 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 How do I spell it? I don't want it to help me. I want to get this on my own. Unfortunately. 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 The house was burned down when they went back to Brooklyn. So they went back to San Diego. This time they bought a house that was still standing. When they got back to San Diego, they learned that their house had burned down. Again. And this time they couldn't afford to rebuild. What the fuck? No. I we're looking for Elmo here. Okay? Alright, so now we know the backstory. Knowing the backstory, I ventured to the Antarctic. Looking for clues on Elmo's whereabouts. Okay. I located a small. This music's gotta go. It sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck, but you know what I mean. All right, new song. Here we go. This is literally the Frankenstein plot. I located a small, deep cave within the ice. Inside the cave, I found Elmo sitting on a rock with his arms crossed. He didn't look happy to see me. Who are you? I stared back into those soulless eyes. I muttered the phrase. I'm going to. I'm, I'm not George fucking R. R. Martin, okay? I'm getting too into this. Dead. Retribution. Oops. Let's retry that. He began to shake. No, no. Hurt me, please don't hurt me. Why should I not hurt you? Because I'm innocent. <laughs> I'm innocent, I swear. Tell me everything. <laughs> this is fucked up. Tell me everything, Elmo. All right, all right, I'll tell you. But you <laughs> have to promise not to kill me. Of course I answer, but I will take you prisoner until I can figure out what to do with you. So spill it. What did you do? What did you do to my friend Gwen? What are you talking? Gwen since she saw you leave her house? What the fuck? What made you flee to Antarctica? 
It's a long story. Just trust me. I didn't do anything wrong. I was just minding my own business. And this lady came along and told me she wanted to buy my life. What does that mean, Elmo? Well, let me start at, at the beginning. <laughs> I can't do this fucking voice. <laughs> Come on, Gwen. I was walking through Central Park one day when this woman approached me. <laughs> she said she wanted to buy my life. I thought she meant she would pay me to go away, but I soon realized that wasn't true. What did she mean? What did she mean? She explained that if I agreed to sell my life, she would give me a million dollars. She said I'd get the money right now, and I wouldn't have to work for it. Did you sign a, a contract? Was there any paperwork involved? Not really. She just gave me the money and said to leave town immediately. <laughs> that was the last I ever saw of her, Mr. Noodle. And you left town. <laughs> what did you do with the money? Where did you go? What did you do with the money? I <laughs> went. I went to Atlantic City and played blackjack. I won a lot of money, and I kept winning more and more as time went on. I became a millionaire in a few months. How much were you getting paid on Sesame Street? It had to have been a lot, right? A thousand dollars a week. So you're telling me that you've been working for free for the past 30 years? How do you feel about that? That's four thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I don't know. Did you have any investments? Did you put any money away? <laughs> Elmo, please. No, I gambled it all away. I guess I didn't think I would live that long. Do you have a family? Where's your family? <laughs> my... 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 My mom passed away a few years ago. My dad died a couple of years after that. They were both in their 70s. Why, are you going to kill me? Please. No, I'm not going to kill you. Ah, I'm just going to hurt you real bad. Ah. Hmm. Unless I need to. I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll just lock you up in a room and throw away the key. Okay, okay, do whatever you want. Just don't hurt me. Good. Get in the back. Get in the back of the fucking squad car. No, get in the... Am I a detective? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can get away. <laughs> back of the squad car I took him to the police station and locked him in a cell I called in a couple of detectives to help me interrogate him they brought in a camera crew to film the interrogation 
We began to question him. Elmo. Have you ever done anything wrong? Have you ever stolen anything? Ever committed a crime? No, I haven't done anything like that. I don't understand what you're talking about. Sure you haven't done anything wrong? Or stolen a candy bar? Corner store? You little shit. Stole something from someone, cheated on your taxes, faked your income tax, committed a fraud? No, I haven't done any of those things. You ever lied to anyone? I point the bright light into his face. Like, beep. No, I've always told the truth. You ever cheated on your wife? You ever lied to her? You ever betrayed her? You ever spoken badly behind her back? Just send it. Send it. Send it. No, I've never done any of those things. You have any enemies? <laughs> yes, I have several enemies. Can you name them? Sure. I have a few people who hate me. One person in particular hates me very much. Who is that? His name is Jim Henson, and he runs a company called The Muppets. Bullshit. You are a part of the Muppets. I know that, Elmo. I know that. He's a part of the Muppets. He's part of the same group that made all everybody else. All, they were all created by, by the Jim Henson Company. Bullshit. You're part of the Muppets. You're a puppet. I know you're a puppet. You're a fucking puppet. I'm not a puppet. I'm a real human being. I'm not a puppet. Prove it. Prove that you're a real human being. Tell me who you are. How do I do that? Tell me who you are. I'm Elmo. I'm a little red monster. Aha. Uh -huh. Not a real boy, are you? Hmm. <laughs> Not a real boy, are you? You can't prove it, can you, Elmo? Okay, okay, I'll prove it. Look, here, look at this picture. He pulled out a picture of himself and showed it to us. <laughs> this doesn't prove anything. We are gonna need far more we're gonna need lo we're gonna need more evidence what else do you want me to do I want you to do the same thing that you did in the picture what what are you talking about you see where your arm is that look on your face do that right now. He did what we asked. He stuck his tongue out and wiggled his ears. He did a bunch of other stuff too, but I don't remember exactly what he did. It was pretty silly. See, I'm not a puppet. I'm a real human being. I'm not a fucking puppet. Okay, okay, okay. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. But he doesn't. I point over to the cookie monster. But he doesn't. The cookie monster is here to testify, Elmo. That you are a puppet. The cookie monster is lying. I'm not a puppet. I'm a real boy. We believe you, Elmo. Now I'm going to let you go. Put a plate of cookies on the counter. With a 
sign that says free cookies on it. Let's see the chaos fucking happen here. Uh, if you come back to the station, you can have as many as you want. Go ahead and eat them all. You deserve it. Thank you. Thank you very much. He ate the cookies. Take Elmo out of the interrogation room and into a cell. And into in. How do you spell interrogation? We take Elmo out of the interrogation room and let him go free. Intero interrogation. You can go now. He leaves the station and heads back to his home in Brooklyn. We watch him walk down the street. We follow him. As he walks away, I turn to the tech detectives and say, That was easy. Oops, I spelled detective wrong. What do you think, Kermy? I haven't been talking like that the whole time. I think we should inter interrogate every single Muppet in America. We should bring them all in for questioning. <laughs> Like a Dr. Pepper ripoff guy? <laughs> oh no, this we're just good. Why would we be going after this guy? He's not even a Muppet. Oh. <laughs> no, no more National Archives. All right, new story, new story. God, oh, that's so stupid. Okay. Uh, that was, that was fun. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, how about, um, let, give me some prompts. What do, what do you think? Give me, give me some things to work with. Toaster. And do I love toast. Crispy edges. Buttery surface area. And the smell of baking bread. You can really put anything on toast. And it will be good. Usually, this is, yeah, let's go. A piece of cheese, check. Sliced tomatoes, check. Yum, peanut butter, yes please. 
Jam, hell yes, honey, duh. It's like a blank canvas that you get to fill with whatever you want. That was way, that was just what I wrote, but five times better. <clears throat> I've been on a toast only diet for several years now following the diet guide just toast I seem to have much more energy my hair is shinier than ever before and I'm totally happy with my life now I'm in my apartment eating some toast when I hear a knock at my door I look through the people and see my neighbor across the hall Mr. Fitz standing there I open the door and let him in. Music, hello. Okay. Move camera. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. Hey, Mark, he says as he walks into my apartment. He looks around, taking in the living room. I nice see you again. Thanks, it's nice to see you too. I offer him a seat at the table and my freshest and my fresh toast I had brewing the last few hours. What brings you by? He sits down, looking at, out the window at the view. Well, I wanted to tell you something that happened at work today. Oh yeah, what did you hear? That you were fired from your job. Well, I was. But why would they fire you? Because ah, I killed someone. You what? Yeah, you didn't know? Well, I guess I'll tell you. A little while back, I worked at a place called the Midnight Sun. I was an assistant manager, which means I did all the dirty work. I got up early to clean the store and make sure everything was stocked and handle any issues that came up during the day. I also made sure that everyone who worked there had their schedule, paychecks, and benefits. Okay. One night a couple months ago, we were short staffed, so I had to stay late. It was already after 11 p.m. when I finally left the building. As I was walking home, I noticed a man who looks suspiciously like my boss, Mr. Fit. Walking towards me. I thought maybe he was just going home from work, too, but I decided to call out to him anyways. Mr. Fitz, I yelled. Wait up! He turned around and walked over to me. What's up, Mark? Is this really you? Yeah, what are you talking about? This isn't the way you normally walk, sir. You always take the long route home. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've been having some trouble with my knees lately. Yes, I could tell. Are you okay? I'm fine. He obviously was not fine. So I offered to carry him. I offered to carry him home. We got to his apartment, and he seemed pretty drunk. I helped him inside, and he fell asleep on the couch. I covered him up with a blanket and left him to sleep it off. Close the quote. Wait, what? Where? Close your speech marks? 
I yelled, wait up, he turned away. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I haven't been writing this. So wait, he obviously was not, but th that, is that, that's me talking, so I'm saying that, right? Like, he obviously was not fine, so I offered to carry him home. Like that? Oh, close that. Okay, I see what you mean. I get it. Like that. Okay. No, no, don't worry about it. I'll be fine. I just think I need to rest for a bit. I helped him into his house, and once inside, I saw that he had blood all over him. I asked him if he needed help getting cleaned up, but he told me to go ahead and leave. So I went back outside and called 911. When the police arrived, they took him away. How did I kill someone? About two weeks later, I was called in to meet with my boss. I was told that he was going to fire me for causing him to lose his job. I protested, telling him I didn't do anything wrong, but he wouldn't listen. I told him, I, I told him, he wouldn't listen. He kept shouting, blood. He kept shouting, the blood. And pointing at me. Finally, I gave up and accepted my faith. A few days later, I got a letter from Mr. Fitz thanking me for helping him. He said that he was grateful for my assistance and that he was going to give me a raise and a promotion. What? <laughs> I said thank you, but could not understand what... No, I said... I said let me see, how do I get this? I said thank you... We need to find the relic. Mr. Fitz, thank you for helping. He said, where, do, where does the killing come in? Okay. I declined and decided to quit on the spot. When I told my neighbor, Mr. Fitz, he told me that I was crazy for leaving such a great job and that I should have done everything I could to save it. But I knew that I couldn't risk losing my job because it's something I did accidentally. So here I am, unemployed and eating toast. Mr. Fitz walks into the midnight sun and I see him sitting at a table. Wait. This is like, are we going back to this moment or something? I approach to shake his hand and greet him, but he doesn't respond. Mr. Fitz, are you okay? He turns to me and says, I'm fine. Are you sure? I lean over to see if he is okay. And a few toast crumbs get on his shirt. He is furious. He becomes enraged. Get out of my sight, you stinking, rotten, lying piece of shit! Well, what's wrong, I ask, confused. Nothing's wrong, you stupid asshole. Close your quotes. Like that. Who did this to me? Who spilled toast on me? I don't know what to say. I look around the restaurant and notice that there's a waitress, a cook, and a busboy. I think, because I'm too embarrassed, I think it was the cook. I think it was the cook. He has been making pizza back there. Where is she now? 
I don't know, he ran off when you started yelling. Find him now! Sir, I don't think you should yell at us like that. What's his name? Calm down, Mr. Fitz. Don't you calm down me. Find that guy and get him out here or I'll do it myself. All right, all right, all right. I'll find him. I'll find him. I find the cook in the back and have him follow me back to Mr. Fitz's table. Here's your pizza, sir. Get out of here now. Uh, I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm the only one who knows how to make pizza. <laughs> Facebook Cleaver? And only I know the secret recipe for a perfect pepperoni. They spell pepperoni? You're lying. You're trying to trick me into letting you go. No, I'm not. Then prove it. How? By giving me the secret recipe. Cook reaches into his pocket and pulls out a large a, a piece of paper that has been crumbled up. On the paper is a list of ingredients. This is the secret recipe. I wrote it down so that you won't forget it. Give it to me and I won't fire you. Fine, I will, but you better keep your word. <laughs> Why do you think you can fire somebody in a different place? The cook hands me the recipe and I walk back to Mr. Fitz's table. Here you go, Mr. Fitz. Thank you, Mark. Okay. I'm very grateful for your help. No problem for you, Mr. Fitz. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Mark. I return to my station and tell the others why am I a cook? <laughs> I notice the cook laughing. I wander over to the cook's station and ask what is so funny. I just wrote down three, I just wrote, I wrote down, uh, how to make, like, formaldehyde? <laughs> I wrote how to make rat poison. I wrote down how to make rat poison. What? I figured since Mr. Fitz is a rat, I would give him the recipe for rat poison. What are you talking about? He's a rat, I told you. What do you mean? You remember when I said I had to write down the recipe for that rat poison? Well, I used my finger to write it down. You wrote the recipe for rat poison with your finger? No way! Well, I can't believe you did that. That's horrible. What do you mean, horrible? Well, you could kill someone with that. Like, really? How? It's easy. Just mix it with water and drink it. You're joking. No, I'm not. If you do that, you'll die. I've run 
into the lobby to find Mr. Fitz about to drink out of a glass of water. I grab the glass of water from him and pour it on the floor. Hey, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? You almost poisoned yourself. Why did you stop me? Because you could have died. I don't want to see that happen. You saved my life. No, I didn't. Just wanted to. Yes, I did. I'm what? Elaborate. If you hadn't stopped, you would have died. So you're saying that you don't care if I die? Of course not. Why would I want you dead? He sneered at me. Sneered at me. <laughs> Whatever. You understand what you just said? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I know you didn't. Don't worry. <laughs> I forgive you. I gotta. Okay, I gotta get more elaborate things to do. I can delete text. Holy shit. Wait. Wait. I have my job back. Sure, no problem. Hold on, I just, I like bit like a piece of skin off. I don't want you to see that. Okay, can I have my job back? Sure, no problem. Let's put this like music. I like it, but. I return to my station and resume my duties as assistant manager. I look at my watch and realize that I'm late for a meeting. I rush out of the restaurant and onto the street. As I walk by Mr. Fitz, I notice he's turning green. He's turning green. Are you okay, Mr. Fitz? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. He stumbles forward and falls to the ground. He hits his head. On a lampshade. It starts bleeding. <laughs> Mr. Fitz, are you hurt? No, I'm fine. <laughs> he gets up and walks over to a trash can. <laughs> He pukes up all the food. <laughs> what the fuck? He pukes up all of the food he ate. <laughs> Get out of here! The music is making me so fucked up! <laughs> it's all- it's all stupid! <laughs> he pukes up all the food he ate at dinner and then collapses on the ground. I rush over to him and sit him up. Mr. Fitz, are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I take him to the hospital where they determine that he is internal bleeding. They tell me they don't, they, they he might not make it. Oh. Jesus. It's like the Stranger Things music. It's just the fact that, like, why would you get up and then go to the trash can? 
think this is so fucked up. <sighs> I ask the nurse, what kinds of vitamins they are giving him in his IV? She tells me they are giving him vitamin K. Vitamin K. Yes, vitamin K helps your blood clot. Without it, you would bleed to death. You mean he might die? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. I tell her to give him more vitamin K. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, you can donate some of your own blood. Okay. Take as much of my blood as you need. She takes some of my blood and gives it to Mr. Fitz. I thank her. No, 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 no. He seems to have some kind of reaction. His skin turns blue and he stops breathing. Help! I scream. The nurse rush in and begin resuscitating him. After a few minutes, he comes back to life. But he's still blue. <laughs> What's going on? I ask. His heart stopped beating for a few minutes. What do I do now? You need to keep pumping his chest until he wakes up? Oh my god. Isn't he awake? <laughs> you need to keep pumping his chest till he wakes up. I continue to pump Mr. Fitz's chest and after a few minutes he opens his eyes. Mark? Mr. Fitz, what happened? I don't know. I was just walking down the street and suddenly I blacked out. Mr. Fitz, you ate rat poison. What? I know, <laughs> I made you eat it! I'm sorry, why would you do that? I wanted to get fired, but I didn't do anything wrong! <sighs> well, I need more. I know, but I couldn't let you get away with poisoning people. I don't understand. That's okay, neither do I. It was just a gut feeling. Here, there we go. The chef was trying to kill you because of how rude you were. Wait, I never said anything bad to him. Yes, you did. I didn't. Yes, you did. And also, you called me a rat. Wrong person. All right, so now he's gonna do the thing where he gets up like in the movies and like, I'm done with all these things in me, right? Mr. Fitz stands up and pulls all of his IVs out. <laughs> like, all right, I'm out. Now you're going to pay for what you did to me. He storms out of the room. The next day, I received a letter from Mr. Fitz thanking me for saving his life. He says that he is grateful for my assistance and he's going to give me a raise and a promotion. I decline and decide to quit on the spot. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The nurse runs in the room and puts them back in. <laughs> You're not going anywhere till we get these IVs back in. Fine, but you better put them back in soon or I'm gonna find the chef. The chef walks in with a bouquet 
of flowers. Hi, Mark. Hello. I brought you some flowers. Thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Fix walks over to the shepherd and punches him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what was that for? The chef asks. For calling me a rat. You punched me, and now you're going to jail. No, I'm not. <laughs> he rips out his IVs again and lunges for the chef. Stop! I scream. Oh, you want me to stop? Yes, please stop. Sorry, I forgot to mention that I'm a vampire. What? I watch in horror as Mr. Fitz digs his fangs into the chef's neck. I scream as I watch the chef turn into a bat and fly away. What are you doing? I'm killing him. Why? Because he tried to kill me. You can't do that. Why not? Because it's illegal. Then call the police. They won't help you. Mr. Fitz turns into a bat and flies at the full speed into a window. <laughs> stop, I scream. You want me to stop? Yes, please stop. Fine, I'll stop. Mr. Fitz stops and flies back to his table. Window breaks and he flies out into the city. I watch in horror as Mr. Fitz continues to fly through the city and eventually crashes into a building. He hits the ground hard and dies instantly. I rush over to, to, to him and find that he is dead. His eyes open. Wake up! I shout. I can't. You have to wake up. You're dead. No, I'm not. He opens his eyes. He closes his eyes. He opens his eyes again. You're not dead? I don't know. Why did you try to kill me? I thought it would be funny. You're a sick man, Mr. Fitz. As I hover over him, small few crumbs from my toast breakfast fall directly into his mouth. Breadcrumbs? Yeah, breadcrumbs. What are they doing in my mouth? I put them there. Why? Because I wanted to see if you would eat them.
Uh, Mr. Fitz sinks his teeth into my neck. But there is no blood. Only, wait, no, not even no blood, only garlic flavor. Whatever. You see, when one eats garlic toast every day, <laughs> seems to come in handy against vampires. What an awful sentence. You taste like garlic, Mr. Fitz says. Yeah, I know. Why? Because I eat garlic every day. Really? Yes, really. Happened, happened, happened. His eyes lock mine. We both stare into each, other, in, into each other's very soul. He realizes what has happened. He will now die from garlic vampire poisoning. He tries to escape, but I grab him and bite him in the neck. He screams in pain. Stop! What's wrong? You're not a vampire anymore. Let's see. The amount of garlic I eat. I actually can reverse vampirism. By drinking your blood. You mean I'll live? Yes, I'll save your life. I'll pull up my knife and stab him in the stomach. What? I hold the knife in place and then start to cut his stomach open. <laughs> I remove his intestines and throw them into a garbage can. I take out his liver and slice it up into pieces. What the fuck? I then take his heart and throw it into the trash can with the rest of the organs. I take a deep breath and inhale the blood that is in the garbage can. It tastes horrible, but it works. I feel alive again. Wow, that was gross. Yeah, it was. Do you know how long it took me to get this organ back inside of you? No, I don't. About two weeks. Two weeks? Yes, it was that bad. I pull up my knife and cut off his head. I put it in the garbage can next to his body. You're a murderer. I'm sorry. Why did you do that? Because you tried to kill me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. There. This is the most realistic VR experience I've ever seen. I agree. Can I use this to make a game? Of course. Thank you. I exit the booth and walk back to the office. What did you guys think of the demo? I ask. It was amazing. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Good, good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting with the investors. Okay, bye. I walk over to my desk and sit down. My phone rings. I answer the phone. Hey, it's me. Hi, it's Mark. Listen, I got a call for... I just got a call from an investor. He wants to talk about the game. Okay. Okay, I'll be right there. I hang up the phone and look at the clock. It's already 3 p.m. I rush out of the office and head over to the meeting. I arrive at the investor's office and knock on the door. The investor answers the door and invites me in. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me today. I'm glad you could make it. I'm sorry I'm late. It's okay. I wasn't expecting you till 4 p.m. We sit down in the conference room and wait for the investor to finish talking to someone on the phone. He hangs up and looks very upset. Seems... The investors do not think 
Vampire Chef VR will sell more than eight copies. I'm sorry, but I don't think we should invest any money into this project. Why not? It's too risky. What do you mean? He pulls out a graph. <laughs> Resident Sleeper. This is a chart of all the games that have sold for over one million copies. So, see, Vampire Chef VR has only sold 7,500 copies. That is not enough for us to invest any more than we already have. Seventy-five hundred copies. That's it. Yes, that's all. I look at the graph and notice that all the other games on the list have sold hundreds of thousands of copies. But why? Well, it's simple. Most people don't like vampires. In fact, I bet most of those who bought the game are children. Children? But I'm 14 years old. Wait, what? 14 year olds don't buy games. They play them on their phones and computers. I don't understand. I'm sorry, but you don't have the right demographic. if we made it a mobile game, took out the blood, and replaced it with a match three exp a match three game where you periodically clean up a house or a garden with points from the match three game. We could lose the VR experience? What if we kept the VR experience, but made it a different game? A different game. Another one. But that wouldn't be a VR game. Yes, it would. You would still be using VR. You would just be playing on a different screen. I don't know. You could hold up two copies of the game in front of each eye. It's the same. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think it would work. We'll, we'll see. If you're interested, give me a call tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. I <laughs> launch forward and bite his neck. He falls to the floor, and I take his heart and throw it into the trash can. I take a deep breath and then exhale. I turn around and see the investor staring at me. Who did I do this to? Who did I do that to? I just saw you bite his neck and then take his heart out of his chest. Oh, I was just showing him what happens when you don't listen to me. I leave the office, head home, and walk into my apartment and sit down on the couch. I look at my computer and realize I need to do some work. I take up my laptop and plug it into the wall. I bite the computer's neck. And pull out its brain. I put the brain into a jar and then put it in my fridge. What are you doing? I'm working! I put the computer into a VR headset and I begin to work. Alright, I'm going off the rails. Yeah, this one's over. <sighs> it's an email from an investor. All right, this, I think I'm done. <laughs> the 
me if I share the bubble. Do a Master Chef episode. All right, one more, one more, one more, one more. I'm a contestant on the hit show Chef Time. Some of the most prestigious. I don't. I don't know. Some of the most prestigious chefs in the world will be critiquing and and I some chef time. Some of them. What what is chef time? I'm a contestant on the hit show on the hit show Chef Time, a game show that is trying to find the next big chef. In my area, in my, in the world. Some of the most prestigious chefs in, the, some of the most prestigious chefs act as judges and contestants are eliminated based on the quality of their cooking. It's a high stakes competition with some pretty amazing prizes. I'm not sure how it works, but they say it's like a reality TV show where you get to be the star. The show airs on one of those channels that my parents never let me watch when I was growing up. <laughs> Why? But now I have access to all kinds of great shows and I can't wait for them to air so I can tell everyone about them. I've been watching a lot of different shows and getting ideas from them. Hold back. I enter the arena and see a dozen chefs all standing with their arms behind their backs and wearing the same branded aprons. There are cameras everywhere and a few people who look like production assistants stand nearby. Uh, I'm feeling very nervous, but also excited. This could be my chance to become famous. I walk into the kitchen and immediately fall, feel out of place. I bite their necks. <laughs> okay. I walk in the kitchen immediately by a place. Suddenly, Chef. Suddenly, Chef Greg Rampson. walks in in front of me. He looks at me and says, ah, you're one of our mystery contestants. I have no idea what he means, so I ask him what he's talking about. He smiles and tells me to follow him. You're one of our mystery contestants. <clears throat> follow Chef Ramson into, I, fo I follow Chef Ramson. Let's see where, where, where are we going? Which turns out to be a changing room. There are a bunch of other chefs waiting there too. They all seem to know each other and some even seem to be friends. So it's like, what, like a green room? Like a, what do you mean, change? What do you mean, changing room? Why is it, cha a, it Usually there's like a green room where everybody hangs out. Why are we all hanging out in a changing room? Sit down at one of the tables and try to relax. It's my big day. I need to prove that I'm the best chef here. Relax. Chef Ramson comes back into the room and tells us that we'll be starting soon. We all put on our aprons and head back into the kitchen. The kitchen has two huge burners, a grill, a fryer, a steamer, a walk, a cutting board, and an oven. It's a lot bigger than I expected, and it looks like the kind of kitchen you would find in a restaurant. I start to wonder if this is really going to be a game show or something else entirely. Ramson approaches. 
Ramson approaches us. And a big timer shows on a billboard behind him. It is a countdown for the start of the show. It's my turn with the cutting board. Oh shit, Anna. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. The chefs take their seats, and the hostess starts introducing everyone. She introduces me as a contestant from the United States, and goes over some rules of the show. Then she introduces Chef Greg Ramson, who will be acting as a judge. I want them to explain the rules. The rules are explained as... Right? The rules are explained as... Well, and I realize that I've been given a great advantage by being able to cook without using any of these tools. I can just use my hands to make food. What? The rules are explained as follows. Each round will last five minutes and each chef gets one minute to cook. If a chef runs out of time before they finish cooking, they lose. There will be two rounds per episode with four chefs competing in each round. <laughs> one minute to make food? Okay. In the first round, chefs will prepare a dish using ingredients provided by the producers. In the second round, chefs will create a dish using whatever ingredients they want. Once a chef has finished cooking, they will give their dish to the judges and wait to hear their scores. Okay. The first round is about to begin. I get to work immediately because I know that I don't have much time. I make my way to the oven and set it to 400 degrees. I add a little olive oil to the pan and start sauteing the vegetables. I also crack open a can of tuna and drain it. I add a bit of salt, pepper, and lemon juice to the tuna and then mix everything together. Once the veggies are done, I throw them in a bowl with the tuna and then pour them all into a baking dish. I put the whole thing in the oven for 15 minutes and <laughs> remove it. <laughs> when, uh, when I taste the dish, it tastes great. It seems like everyone liked my dish. Chef Ramson says that he loves the flavors and wants to see more from me. I make it to the next round. <laughs> I make it to the next round. Round two. This round is called soups and it's about to begin. I get to choose what type of soup I want to make. I decide to go with the chicken noodle soup. I've always loved that flavor. I make my way to the fridge and pull out a couple of cans of chicken broth. I take them to the stove and heat them up. Then I grab some carrots, celery, and onions and cut them up. I saute the veggies in the broth until they are soft and then add the noodles to the pot. I let the soup simmer for a while and then serve it to the judges. I think the judges like the soup, but I'm still nervous about the next round. The final round is called the pasta. It's called pasta and it's about to begin. I choose what type of pasta I want to make. I decide on Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. I decide on Mac and Cheese. Staple from my childhood. I decide on Hamburger Helper. That's better. I decide on Hamburger Helper. I figure it would be Easy. No, I decide on hamburger helper. Let's see what the fucking AI does with this one. I head to the pantry and grab a box of the macaroni and cheese. I also pick up a can of tomato sauce, some milk, and a pound of ground beef. I bring all these items to the counter and start making my hamburger helper. I decide to really wow the judges. I'm going to add an extra three pounds of ground beef. I add a little salt, pepper, and garlic to the meat, and then mix it with the macaroni. I pour the tomato sauce into the pan and then turn the heat down to low. This, where's the pasta? I throw away the pasta. I take the hamburger helper off the heat and serve it to the judges. 
I think they like the dish, but I'm still nervous about the next round. The last round is called Cake, and it's about to begin. I get to choose what type of cake I want to bake. I decided to make a carrot cake. I make my way to the fridge and grab a couple of cans of pineapple. I then take the cans out of the oven and let them cool. I open the can of sardines and pour them into a bowl. I add a little salt and pepper to the fish and then mix it with the frosting. <laughs> I, can't. I take the carrot cake out of the fridge and spread the frosting on top. all over the cake. Then I then use the sardine frosting to draw a face on the cake. I finish by adding some sprinkles and putting the cake back in the fridge. I think the judges like the cake, but I'm nervous about the next round. Nothing is going to fail. I made it through the entire competition. I'm so happy. I'm ready to win the grand prize. I make my way to the stage and give the hostess a hug. She introduces me to the other contestants and tells us that we're going to compete in a dessert challenge. We're given a list of ingredients and told to make a dessert using any combination of them. Since I won the last competition, I now act as judge. I taste the desserts and give each chef a score. I also give the winner a trophy and a check for $50,000. The chefs who didn't win are awarded a consolation prize. I get to sit this one out and watch. That's probably better. I hope that the other contestants can do better than me. The first contestant makes a fruit tart, which looks delicious. The second contestant makes a chocolate mousse, which is also good. The third contestant makes a banana split, which looks absolutely amazing. Contestant opened a pre made cake from the grocery store, placed it on his seat, and sat on it. It was hard to tell if he actually made anything at all. Fifth contestant was a woman named Kelly. She had a really nice smile and seemed like a sweet person. She brought a cake with her and she started to decorate it right away. Fourth contestant got on top of the table and sat on her cake too. Kelly tried to make the best of the situation and decorate it around the cake. Her cake looked amazing, but the judges said that she would have taken care of the cake before. She should have taken care of the cake before decorating it. The sixth contestant was a man named Tim. He didn't have much of a personality and he didn't talk much either. He just worked quietly in the kitchen and kept to himself. He had a big smile on his face though, which was nice to see. Seventh contestant was actually just the fourth contestant with in a mustache. He made a rack of ribs and it was immediately disqualified. I mean, it's supposed to be dessert. How do you spell immediately? Thank you. 
That's wrong. Immediately. What? Imme immediately. I'm not an I'm not an English major. Why are you be saying that? I'm not an English major. Thank you, Holly. Immediately. All right, he's immediately disqualified. The eighth contestant was a man named Bill. He was a very quiet guy, but he seemed like a genuinely good person. He made a chocolate souffle, and the judges thought it tasted great. How many contestants are there? The ninth contestant was a woman named Ashley. She had a beautiful smile. She seemed like a nice person. She bought a brownie sundae, which looked amazing. The tenth contestant was a woman named Alice. She had an amazing smile. She seemed like a nice person. She brought a pie. The judges thought it was delicious. The eleventh contestant was a man named Sam. He seemed like a nice guy, but didn't say much. He just worked quietly in the kitchen. Company. He made a tiramisu. The judges thought it was great. Contestant 12 through 2500 all made their way through the competition. I couldn't believe that I made it this far. I was so excited and was ready to win the grand prize. The 13th contestant was a man named Will. He seemed like a nice guy, but he didn't say, say much. Uh, the 2615th contestant was frozen outside because it's minus 20 degrees out and we didn't have space for everyone. I was really nervous and I felt like I was going to throw up. I made my way into the kitchen and started working. The 14th contestant was a woman named Julie. She seemed like a nice person. <laughs> she brought a hot fudge sundae which looked amazing. It's looping. <laughs> yeah, we're looping. Like the, the final contestant made their way into the arena and gave the hostess a hug. They introduced themselves and told us that they were going to make a pie. I was really nervous and I felt like I was going to throw up. Claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. Uh, I, I felt like I was throwing I threw up into contestant 650's baking pan. There were people everywhere. It was very claustrophobic. And I was about to pass out. I made my way into the kitchen and started working. It's just people every. There's too many people. Chef Ramson. Bolts the door closed. They are overrunning us. And I'm about to die. I made my way into the kitchen and started working. The 17th contestant was named James. He seemed like a really nice guy. He had a beautiful smile. We're being overrun. I lay where no 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 whoa 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 too many chefs I fall ground I fall down on the ground and die The hostess asks the contestants who they think should win the grand prize. Everyone answers at the same time, 
all talking over each other. The hostess tells him to stop yelling at each other and to answer her question. Jeff Rampson says that he thinks I should win the grand prize. I'm so surprised. I'm dead on the floor, so they have to give it to someone else. I'm sad that I didn't win, but I'm happy that I made it this far. I make my way back to my house and think about how I could improve on my dishes. Oh, repetition penalty, yeah. Add some quotation marks. This is so much fun, though. It's just so stupid. Tuna noodle soup, because it turned out great. Alright. <sighs> I think that's gonna be it. I'm actually getting hungry now. Mr. Fitz Revival? I look weird today. Has this music been annoying? Hopefully it hasn't been, like, irritating. I've been listening to it for like 45 minutes. That was fun. That was a good time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you... When does Elden Ring come out? What's the actual day? Thursday? I'm going to be ready to play that game. I'm going to be ready to... I'm going to lock myself in here and play that all day. It's four days in one hour. So that unlocks at like 9.30? Hmm. I don't think I want to start my stream at 9.30. 9.30 a.m.? Because that would be noon on the... Okay. I won't be starting that early, but I'll, I'll, I'm, when I get up, I'm going to get right over here. Thursday at 9 p.m.? Really? That can't be right, right? Alright, we'll figure it out. Uh, if for some- okay, here's the- here's the plan. If Elden Ring- Actually, let me just close this. If Elden Ring- let's see, Elden Ring launch time. This is technically, it, te it comes out at midnight. Eastern. On the 25th. So that's, yeah, that's 9 p.m. on the 24th. Do you, alright, let me ask you guys this. I mean, do you got, do you want me to do like a launch, like 9 p.m. stream? Or should I just wait? And do it on Friday. I could. Alright. Here's the plan. If I'm going to do a 9pm stream. Just like a launch stream. And just play for like at least. Well because yeah I'll play it the next day too. Yeah let's do it. Let's fucking go. I've never done that before. I have absolutely never done a launch game stream before. When it comes out the second it's available. I'm going to stream on the 24th at 9 p.m. Pacific. We're going to play for at least four, three, four, five hours. And then I'm going to go to bed and get up. And we're going to do it all over again on Friday. I did that with Monster Rancher? Yeah, I'm a liar. You're right. So we'll do a launch stream. Let's go. So I will be live on the 24th at 9 p.m. or 9.30 maybe to give it like 20, 30 minutes to unlock. Make sure I can actually do it. Yeah. That sounds fun. Thanks for watching. The first game was really cozy. I really enjoyed that. And it's always fun to mess around with. I, there was a couple things in the AI, novel AI stuff that was really funny. I will see you guys later. Have a great night.
Take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys on the Elden Ring launch. Be ready. See you guys soon.